So, my name is Mark O'Neill. Uh, I'm with Axway. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background um, about Axway, uh, also about Bordell. Um, some of you may know Bordell as a API management, API gateway vendor. Um, so, um, I'll be uh, also giving a little background. What I'm going to talk about is uh, taming the wild rest, so API security. Give some examples of um, how APIs are being secured. Of course, uh, standards like OAuth um, are very important there. Uh, and recently, there's been a number of attacks on, on APIs that I think are relevant uh, to, to look at here in terms of how, how they were done. Um, so moving on uh, to the next slide. Um, yes, you can see uh, a little bit of background there. Um, so I'm co-founder with Fordell. Um, from the, the background of SOA and API gateways, uh, we were acquired by Axway. Axway, uh, for those who don't know, is an 800-person company based in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, a lot of people in Europe to, uh, related to uh, B2B, managed file transfer, uh, and now API security. Um, used a lot in, in, in uh, telecom, so also government, healthcare, other, other areas. I'm based in Boston. So can we move on to the next slide? So about web APIs, I think everybody knows this um, here. Um, you can go through the, the build here of this um, uh, particular slide. Um, that's the, the entire build there. Uh, but effectively, um, as I think uh, everybody knows, we've gone from SOA uh, through to, to APIs. APIs are, are, are now the uh, endpoints, uh, particularly in, in uh, mobile telecoms, uh, certainly uh, from our customers. Uh, we work very closely with some of the um, mobile network operators, uh, for example, three in the UK um, and others, but it's really all about uh, managing APIs, especially APIs used for um, charging, used for in-app billing, um, for example. So the next slide. Um, so here, um, again, you can see different mobile apps. These are examples um, of, of where um, in particular Vordell and now um, Axway uh, technologies are, are being used. So, um, so um, you can see here um, also the Internet of Things as well with um, cars, smart meters, ship transponders. Um, again, uh, particularly for the sensor, the world of sensors, and particularly for um, going from traditionally APIs um, are associated with HTTP and REST. And uh, now they're more associated with um, the uh, uh, across, across the board different protocols. Um, so for Internet of Things, um, t technologies like MQTT, originally from IBM, now part of Oasis, I'm seeing some traction now are, are important. Um, so in terms of why uh, this is important, um, you can see that um, the um, uh, one, one of the key things here is that um, there has been some recent uh, attacks on, on APIs. Uh, so one one of the um, API uh, attacks recently uh, is related to um, a, a service called Buffer. Uh, so what people aren't aware of Buffer um, is the um, it's it's an app uh, basically a service. Uh, that's used by corporate customers to uh, tweet uh, to, for example, if you have uh, 10 tweets that your company wants to send out to space them out. Um, so then you can, for example, have, have your tweets going naturally um, over time. Uh, what happened was it was attacked, and we'll see um, shortly how uh, it was attacked. But effectively, this uh, was kind of a humorous situation where you have, for example, Brussels Airlines here uh, tweeting uh, about a weight loss uh, fruit um, that, that they found. Uh, so uh, one of the things was um, it's kind of a wake-up call in this. Um, it, although uh, an API was attacked, we'll see it leveraged, um, uh, for example, insecure usage of, of all of, uh, because it was kind of a humorous type of outcome and it wasn't, uh, for example, a, a payments API or online banking API. Uh, we can kind of laugh at this one, but but still use it as a, as a 
uh, a lesson going forward. Uh, so this was um, quite recently, uh, last month, um, that this happened. And on, a, on the next slide, uh, we can see a little bit more details about how uh, this particular API had been attacked. So you can see uh, a number of things happen. It's like uh, sometimes when uh, there's some um, disaster and you find out it wasn't just one thing that was bad. Uh, it, it was a number of things that went wrong. Um, so, you know, the first thing um, that was um, not good uh, was related to um, the whole area of um, uh, how the um, how the, the actual code for the app was being stored. Um, so in this case, um, kind of surprisingly, the, um, the, the code itself was uh, including the API keys, um, the uh, secret key and the, the uh, uh, basically the, 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 the two keys used for auth um, were being stored hard-coded into code uh, that was on GitHub. Um, so that, uh, first of all, uh, was not a good thing. Um, secondly, um, an issue uh, was that um, uh, the OAuth access tokens uh, were not uh, being encrypted or, or were not being, for example, uh, just stored as hashes of, of the access tokens themselves uh, for being compared. They were stored in the clear as the actual access tokens. Um, so again, that was not a best practice. Um, so, so what happened was um, they had um, a number of issues. Uh, the third issue was they didn't have you know, so-called um, the cloud login services where they could enable an, another um, identity provider, another IDP to be used. Uh, which may have had um, better um, uh, security related to, to its, its, its OAuth tokens. Um, so really it was this chain of events beginning with the unencrypted uh, storage of, of the OAuth tokens going on uh, to the fact that the, uh, the source code containing the tokens was stored in GitHub. But I think um, certainly uh, the GitHub piece um, is, is something that most people would uh, not see as any kind of best practice, uh, but it did open up certainly um, some interesting um, uh, best practices related to all of token storage. Um, uh, we, uh, for example, use Apache Cassandra for that as, as how the tokens are being stored, but in terms of storing, uh, for example, the digest of the tokens, not, not the tokens itself, um, would be seen here as, I think, as best practice. Um, so I'd certainly encourage people to you know, have a look. Uh, there's a very good programmable web um, story by uh, they have a Berlin on, on this. Um, it's definitely worth um, looking at. So on, on the next slide, um, we go on um, for more um, about um, you know how web threats apply to REST. I think one of the questions you know we certainly see out in the field a lot is you know how is web-based PI security, REST security different um, than uh, what went before, so web application firewalling. So how are um, cross-site scripting attacks, how are you know, various different attacks relevant here? Uh, and so the, the thing is, uh, we, we see you know, quite a lot of are still relevant. Uh, APIs at the end of the day often are, are in front of, of uh, databases. Um, there is uh, obviously a predominance of, of JSON being used, uh, but there still is a, a lot more XML out there than, than sometimes people think. Uh, Firestar had a good report recently, which I think was the best uh, survey of, of XML and JSON, uh, and, and they interviewed developers, uh, Randy Hefner at Forrester, and, and found that actually uh, there was a lot more JSON, or a lot more XML usage out there than he had thought, uh, still more than JSON, although of course JSON is, is, is growing and growing fast. Um, so, so all of these attacks have to be thought about and, um, and blocked as well. So, moving on to the next slide. Um, so you see, you know, the requirements to do things like uh, a blacklist, of the, the content types, a blacklist of, you know, searching the message, the header, and, and various different kind of regular expressions. Um, so this is something, certainly that whatever tool is used should have um, this type of regular expression filtering in it. Um, we can move on to the next slide. So. You know, this is the whole area of API management then. So, 
Now, obviously, there's a lot of vendors um, in, in this um, area, you know, not just as explained. But what I kind of draw attention to here is the whole idea here is to have um, the portal for simple um, sign up of developers, uh, have the gateway um, applying the policies at runtime, and then have a kind of a virtuous feedback loop between the two. So you have different actors in terms of the administrators registering APIs in the portal, applying policies, applying quotas, uh, the developers registering, getting all the information about how to use the APIs, uh, and then the developers develop apps, uh, and the apps then at runtime uh, connect to uh, the APIs through an API gateway. Um, so, so in all that um, scenario, you have uh, basically um, different actors uh, being taken care of uh, and, and, and different uh, pieces of puzzle. So uh, I think this is uh, probably the um, kind of best practice architecture. Uh, one of the pieces that um, the people often focus on here, I think, correctly, is that in the world of SOA, there was the registry repository, EDDI. Uh, now in the world of API management, we have the API portal instead. Um, with EDDI, um, it was quite a chore for developers to register whistles, to um, pull down whistles, find things in it. Um, with a portal, it's a lot easier for the developer. Uh, but still, what's missing uh, is, is the programmatic um, ability to automatically pick up API definitions, automatically pick up uh, new versions of APIs. Uh, if, if a policy changes in the API, let's say, uh, it didn't have a security policy, now it requires OAuth uh, to have that being applied. Uh, that piece is, is, is kind of a missing link at the moment, uh, but there are some, some initiatives. Uh, RAML, RAML is, is one example of that, uh, which would effectively lay on this. Um, ironically, that's something that the world of SOA did have a lot of, and, and then was criticized for that because it was, seemed to be very complex with WS Metadata Exchange, WS Policy Attachment, WS Policy, uh, and all the rest. So that, that's something that's missing at the moment. So hopefully, when that comes into REST APIs, it won't result in a situation where it adds so much complexity that then people um, then, uh, are turned off by that and, and move on to, to, to something else. But I think this is the kind of canonical API management uh, diagram here that certainly Axway and, and others would uh, subscribe to. Um, next slide, please. And, and of course, the key part of that is the API developer portal. Um, again, nothing special for Axway here about this, but it, it's something that I think is all about um, self-service uh, for, for users of, of apps, uh, users of, of the APIs, and developing apps that, that are going to use those APIs. Um, so you know, here, you know, it's going back to the uh, example of uh, Buffer uh, getting the OAuth credentials. Um, you know, this is where the OAuth credentials are, are often issued from, from, from an API portal. Uh, and then, of course, it, it's important for the client, the app developer, uh, to manage those. So that's where the security for the Buffer uh, app, for example, uh, fell down in terms of how the credentials uh, were, were then being hard-coded. Uh, so API quotas uh, and so forth are, are, are here enabled um, in, in the same place. So the next slide, please. So I'm kind of going through, um, just going through um, the, the slides here, uh, hopefully quickly um, within the time. But um, effectively, um, one of the things about REST API security was until recently, I think it was either seen as some kind of subset of web application security or something that people uh, didn't have to think about. Um, so um, the buffer attack, which I encourage people to, to read more about, uh, I think is a wake-up call for that. Um, it shows the web APIs, um, because of usage of technologies like OAuth, um, have to be treated separately than just regular web applications. Um, so those standards are important. Um, Gateway is important, I think, help, um, not only in terms of the managing developers, uh, but also having a blacklist of attacks, um, regular expressions, different ways of mitigating the attacks. Um, other attacks, you know, for example, JSON-based attacks that we don't have time to go into in detail here, uh, but I think that certainly um, can, can help here. Um, 
So then um, on, on the final slide, you have um, my contact details. Um, so here, um, by all means, uh, follow uh, me on Twitter. Um, if you have questions, um, it'd be possible to uh, receive them through the, the chat window here. Uh, but thank you very much for um, bearing with the, um, the remote nature of, of this presentation. And uh, by all means, um, uh, contact me uh, for, for any questions you have.